the carving of permanent maxillary right central incisor the materials required are a wax block a measuring scale a lacron carver a divider first we'll smoothen the wax block to get an even surface now we'll start by drawing the midline on all the four aspects and label the labial aspect mesial aspect distal aspect and the lingual aspect while labeling on a right maxillary central incisor the mesial aspect will be on the right side and the distal aspect will be on the left side of the labial aspect now draw the midline on all the four aspects once it's done we'll start marking the crown and the root length the crown length is 10.5 mm and the root length is 13 mm this is the crown part and this is the root part now we'll mark the mesodistal dimension at the middle third of the crown that is 8.5 mm and the mesodistal dimension of the crown at the cervix is 7 mm now join both the points and make a label outline of the crown now remove the excess wax from both the sides now with the help of a divider measure 10.5 mm that is the crown length and mark it on the labial aspect now measure 13 mm that is the root length and mark it on the labial aspect now extend the crown and the root length on all the four aspects measure 8.5 mm and mark on the middle third of the crown and measure 7 mm and mark at the cervix now join both the points and mark the label outline of the crown then remove all the excess wax from the mesial and the distal aspect after removing the excess wax this is how it looks coming to the mesial aspect we'll mark the labiolingual width of the crown that is 7 mm and the labiolingual width at the cervix that is 6 mm now join the two points and draw the mesial outline then remove the excess wax from the label and the lingual aspects mark the midline on the mesial aspect now measure 7 mm and mark on the middle third of the crown now measure 6 mm and mark at the cervix now join both the points and give the mesial outline of the crown now remove the excess wax from both the sides this is how it looks from the mesial aspect the labial aspect distal aspect and lingual aspect Now start rounding off all the edges and taper the crown lingually and reduce the width of the cingulum. This is the lingual outline. 
this is how it looks from the labial aspect nasal aspect lingual aspect and distal aspect now from the lingual aspect using the other side of the cover carve the fossa just below the cingulum leaving about 1 mm of wax at the margins for the marginal ridges and the incisal ridge for the lingual incisal ridge once the lingual aspect is carved the distal incisal angle should be rounded and the mesial incisal angle should be carved sharper from the mesial aspect ensure that the incisal edge and the midline falls in one line once the crown is done mark the outline of the root on the labial aspect and remove the excess wax from the mesial and the distal aspect Similarly remove the excess wax from the labial and the lingual aspect Now round off all the edges Now the root should be tapered lingually from the labial aspect This is how it looks Now draw the crown length on all the four aspects Mesially the curvature of the cervical line is 3.5 mm showing the convexity facing towards the incisal edge Distally the curvature of the cervical line is 2.5 mm Labially draw a semicircular or a curved cervical line This is how it looks from the labial aspect the distal aspect the lingual aspect and the mesial aspect Carve the mamelons on the incisal ridge To carve the mamelons draw two equal vertical lines on the incisal one third deepen and round off the two lines so as to appear as three rounded protuberances on the incisal ridge Lastly we'll start polishing the tooth surface 
with a small piece of cotton the polish should be done according to the direction of the carving